Good afternoon. I am here with Quincy and Lillian, and we're going to do a quick mini lesson on how we can create equivalent fractions. We have been doing that using two kind of main strategies. This is an important skill for us to know as we move forward into fourth grade and into fifth grade um, so that we can multiply, divide, add, and subtract fractions. Um, we need to be able to create and rename fractions as their equivalents. The first strategy that we use is a visual model. This is a visual model that shows three fourths. We have one whole. We have divided it into four equal parts of which three are shaded. So if I was to use a visual model and I wanted to create an equivalent fraction, Quincy, what is one thing that I could do to help me find an equivalent fraction for three-fourths? You could times it. That is going to be the multiplication rule. Quincy's jumping ahead. Using a visual model, how can I turn this fraction, three-fourths, into an equivalent fraction? What am I doing, Quincy? We are dividing it into equal parts. If I have a area model, a bar model, if I just draw the two lines across, thus dividing it, I end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve parts of which, how many of them are shaded, Quincy? Nine. Nine. Um, I find this way really, really effective, and plus it really shows students that three-fourths is equivalent to nine-twelfths. There is, I did not shade any extra parts. I made more parts, there is more of them, but the amount of shaded area remains the same. We could actually continue with this process, and as long as we remembered where our lines were, we could make all kinds of equivalent fractions. Uh, it also works for our friend, the circle model, if that is one fourth, and I wanted to rename this as another equivalent fraction, again, as long as I'm cutting my parts equally, I've now turned this into two equals. Um, that is one way to create an equivalent fraction, is to divide your visual model. Jumping ahead to the multiplication rule that Quincy was talking about earlier, I'm gonna take the fraction two fifths. I'm gonna imagine that is not gonna show up very well on with two fifths. Another way to find an equivalent fraction is to use the multiplication rule and do what with this fraction, Quincy? Like times as long as I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, I will end up with equivalent fraction. Quincy is 100% correct. If I multiply both of these by two, I end up with four tenths. Lillian, give me another single digit, or it doesn't even have to be single digit. Lillian, tell me your favorite number. Three. <laughs> Fantastic. We end up with six fifteenths. That is definitely another way that students can find an equivalent fraction from any other fraction. We are very quickly going to use the division rule as well. Let's say I have the fraction 8 twelfths. Um, this is the inverse, converse, the reverse of the multiplication rule in which I am going to divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. The only difference with this one is I need to find a common factor of both numbers. So Quincy, other than 1 times 8, what is another factor pair for 8? 2 times 4. 2 times 4. I'm going to do 1 times 12, 2 times 6. Quincy, what is the last factor pair for 12? Factor. 3 times 4. 3 times 4. Lillian, looking up on this, both of these lists of factors, what number do you see on both? Of those uh, factor rainbows. Four. Four. We could have also done two. So we are going to take four. We are going to divide eight by four. Much like the multiplication rule, we have to multiply both the numerator, excuse me, divide the numerator, denominator by the same number. 
Quincy, what is eight divided by four? Two. Two. Lillian, what is 12 divided by four? Um, three, yeah. Three. We have an equivalent fraction. Um, we have a test tomorrow. We have the new year tonight. Hope to see you soon. Thanks to both Lillian and Quincy.